As we continue to work with integration and specifically with substitution, we're going to address the question, how do we integrate with exponents or with exponentials? and logarithms. To set this up, we basically are working with a couple new formulas that often are seen within the context of substitution. First one, we already know that the integral of e to the x dx, that's going to be equal to e to the x plus c. We can extend that a little bit and take the integral of a to the x dx. Now, if you remember, the derivative of a to the x is a to the x times the natural log. So the antiderivative is going to be a to the x divided by the natural log of the base plus a constant. Another formula, oops, I didn't number that one. That's number two. Another formula, formula number three, is the integral of 1 over x dx. And we've talked about this one very briefly. We know that the derivative of natural log is 1 over x. So the integral of 1 over x must be the natural log of x plus a constant. I'm going to put 4 below it, because 4 and 5 go together. 4 and 5 take a look, though, at how we can actually integrate the natural log of x dx. The integral of the natural log is going to be x times the natural log of x minus x plus a constant. Or you could factor out the x and say x natural log of x minus 1 plus a constant. And then another formula generalizing our integral of the log base a of x dx. Very similar, we're just going to divide by the natural log of a. It's x over the natural log of a times the natural log of x minus 1 plus a constant. So five more formulas for us to play with in integration. Quite often, these formulas come up within the context of substitution. So that's why we do this after substitution, even though the formulas are straightforward. Let's try a couple examples, as these are often seen with substitution. It becomes a good review for the process of substitution. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to take the integral of x squared e to the negative 2x cubed dx. And what I see is the inside function of negative 2x cubed is an ideal candidate for our u, the negative 2x cubed, because du, its derivative, is negative 6x squared. So while our u is negative 2x cubed, du is negative 6x squared dx. We've got the dx. We've got the x squared. So we need to bring in a negative 6 and multiply by negative 1 6 on the outside. So that negative 6 can become part of the integral. And so we end up with negative 1 6 times the integral of e to the u du, and that's a very easy integral to calculate. We have negative 1 sixth e to the u plus c, or negative 1 sixth e to the negative 2x cubed plus c. And you might want to simplify that if you want. You could say that's negative 1 over 6e to the 2x cubed plus c if you decide to simplify that. Let's try another example. Let's do a definite integral. Let's integrate from 1 to 2 e to the 4x to the negative 2 all over x cubed dx. 
Now, before we get too far into this, that over x cubed, we could write that as x to the negative 3 times e to the 4x to the negative 2 dx. And when we do that, we end up with a very similar look. We've got an inside function of negative 4x or 4 to the of 4x to the negative 2. And so if that becomes our inside function, our du becomes negative 8x to the negative 3 dx. We're missing the negative 8, so we'll multiply by negative 8 and negative 1 8. And that way, we've got the 8x to the negative 3 dx. That's going to become our du. And now our integral is negative 1 8 times. Let's put these limits on here. We can plug these limits into the u function. 1 to the negative 2 is 1 times 4 is 4. Plugging 2 in, 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth times 4 is 1. And then we're left with e to the u du. Now, I do notice that the uh, integration is kind of backwards here. We like the small number to be on the bottom. But when we switch them, we just have to change the sign of the front number. So we can say this is actually equal to a positive 1 8 times the integral from 1 to 4 of e to the u du. And now we can evaluate that as saying it's e to the u divided by 8 integrated from 1 to 4. So we have e to the fourth minus e to the first all over 8 for the area underneath this curve between 1 and 2. Let's try another example. Let's do the integral of 1 over x plus 2 dx. Sometimes you'll see this written with the dx in the numerator, the integral of dx over x plus 2. They both mean the same thing. And you might notice that we're inclined to say the inside function is that x plus 2. So u is equal to x plus 2. Du, its derivative is 1 dx, or just dx. So x plus 2 and 1 dx. So what we end up with is the integral of 1 over u du, which is really nice because we know the integral of 1 over u is the natural log of u plus a constant. Should be in red natural log of u plus a constant. Going back, substituting that u, we get the natural log of x plus 2 plus a constant is our antiderivative. Let's try one that's kind of similar in nature, but maybe a little more complex. Let's do number 4 the integral of 2x to the third plus 3x all over x to the fourth plus 3x squared dx. Lots of pieces going on here. One thing we can hope is if the denominator is our inside function and the numerator is the outside function, we end up with 1 over u, which is the natural log. Let's see if that works. If u is equal to x to the fourth plus 3x squared, du then is 4x cubed plus 6x. That doesn't quite seem to match the numerator. But look, oh, I forgot the dx. But look what happens when we factor out 2 from that du. We have 2 times 2x cubed plus 3x dx. 
And it turns out that's quite similar to the numerator. We just need to multiply by a 2 on the inside and a 1 half on the outside. And then we end up with 2 times 2x cubed plus 3x dx becomes the du. The denominator becomes the u. And we end up with a real nice integral, 1 half times the integral of 1 over u du, which is just the natural log of u over 2 plus a constant. Substituting back, we get the natural log of x to the fourth plus 3x squared all over 2 plus a constant. And we have our final antiderivative. Let's do an example with a logarithm in the integral. We'll keep this one simple, number 5. Let's do the integral. Let's just do log base 3 of 4x dx. Our inside function looks to be 4x inside the logarithm. So if I let u equal 4x, du is equal to 4 dx. So we're going to need to multiply by a 4 on the inside and a 1 fourth on the outside. So we have our u. Our 4 dx is our du. This becomes a real nice integral of 1 fourth times the integral of the log base 3 of u du. Using our formula then for a log base 3, we would have 1 fourth times x over the natural log of the base, which is 3, times the natural log of x minus 1 plus a constant. Oops, but we don't have x's. We have u's. So if I replace those u's with what they equal 4x, we get 4x over 4 natural log of 3 times the natural log of 4x minus 1 plus a constant. Those 4's reduce out. So for my final answer, x over natural log of 3 times the natural log of 4x minus 1 plus our constant. Let's try one last example as we wrap up here today. Example number 6. Let's do a definite integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine x over 1 plus cosine x dx. Well, again, we like to see if that denominator can become our u of 1 plus cosine x. If that's our u, the derivative du, the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x dx, which means we need to introduce a negative inside and outside the radical so that negative sine x dx becomes that du. And again, the integral becomes a nice, beautiful integral from Let's plug these limits into our u equation. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Plus 1 is 1 for that top limit. Cosine of 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2 for the bottom limit. And then we're left with 1 over u du. But again, I like to have the limits of integration in order. So let's switch the order. As we do that, we'll switch the signs. So we have the integral from 1 to 2 of 1 over u du. And 1 over u becomes the natural log of u integrated from 1 to 2. So that's the natural log of 2 minus the natural log of 1 
But you may remember that the natural log of 1, log base anything of 1, is always equal to 0. So really, all we have left is the natural log of 2 for our answer. So today, what we're really doing is working more with substitution, practicing that substitution process and that substitution step. Uh, we're just doing it in the context of these logarithm and exponential formulas that we're adding to our repertoire, but not too difficult to add them to the repertoire. Good to continue practicing, though, with this substitution. Take a look at a couple problems, practice them tonight, and we will see you in class to work on them further and answer any questions that you may have.